on to the fucking thing we really want to talk about. Mo Salah. Right. Um <laughs> I can't stop watching that goal at the weekend. Um there was a girl on Twitter that had a video from the cop for her YouTube channel. Um Chloe Boxham is her name. Or Bloxham is her name. And the video is unbelievable. If you haven't seen a goal watch it. Uh, the tweet is no. just a video and it says, I suggest you turn your phone on its side to watch this and it's out of this world. But Kev, I'll come to you first. Um first of all, the goal is just ridiculous. It's the only word I can use for it is ridiculous, right? Yeah, it is. And secondly, how good is he? Is he for you the best player in the world right now? I think the only one who can talk to him at the minute is Robert Lewandowski. Okay. But yeah. that is it. No one else is close. Um, and to bear in mind, put it in perspective, Salah, I think the Premier League is the deepest league in world football at the minute. Which, what I mean by that is Norwich went out, spent 30, sold 30 million quid's worth of players, invested 30 million quid from players that were doing it from mid-range clubs in Germany. So when we're, when Salah is playing against relegation fodder in our league, he's playing against 15, 20 million pound players regularly. And he's churning out numbers that are just beyond belief. This season, he's on target to beat goals and assists his first season at the club. He's on target to beat that. He had 44 it, goals in his fourth season. He's on target to hit 50 goals and assists Ridiculous. so far this season. And the, the fact that he is playing, I think, if you brought up the graphics, or you look at any heat maps, this season, Salah is playing wider he's playing further wide in the right he's staying wide and not coming in until really late and you'll see the left winger and striker play more like um left forward and striker where the two of those on that side of the pitch are close together the left center mid tends to hang back a bit more and interlink with robo they're further spread out on the left hand side where the right hand side you'll have trent and whoever's playing right mid but salah's pushed wide and he's giving himself more space and more time to attack the fullback. I think he's thinking about the game more. I think he's more confident than I've ever seen him on his right foot. I mean, it was it was frustrating watching him because even though you knew what he was going to do, he was always going to chop back onto his left foot, whip a cross in, try for a curler for the far post. Now he's confident enough to go on his right foot. If you're a fullback, I think, Cancel, like I said, I think Cancelo is a phenomenal fullback. And you want Salah coming into Cancelo. If you're Cancelo, I want him coming into my strong foot, to my right foot. That's what Jose did with Luke Shaw when they had so much success against Salah, was they pushed out onto him and this put a right footer as well as Luke Shaw doubling up on him. Now he's just further wider. He's just playing further wide. And he's saying, yeah, just come on, come at me. Because if you come at me, I'll pop it back into midfield and I'll go. If not, you'll give me space not run at you. Either way, I'm going to create a chance for someone else or I'm going to score myself. He's got you, as a fan now, edge your seat. He's like, he's going to do something. I want to watch Liverpool because I want to see what Mo Salah is going to do. He's it's very few players who've been able to do that that I would go out of my way to watch him, even if I wasn't a Liverpool fan. I would go out of my way to watch him because I did it with Zidane when Real Madrid were ever on Sky Sports on a Saturday night and back when they had all of Galacticos and everything like that, I watched Zidane. I love Zidane. I think he's a phenomenal player. Salah's there with me with that now where it doesn't matter what game it is, I'll go out of my way to watch him. He's that good. You know, there's only a handful of players in the last 10 years that you go out of your way to watch because they're phenomenal players. I think he's he's different gravy. He really is. He's He's got way surpassed any expectations I ever had. Of him, I think he's just unreal. Keith, um, I'm gonna flash some up on the screen here now for you. Um, and it's this since joining Liverpool in 2017, Mo Salah has more combined goal and assists than any other player. He currently sits on 101 goals and 37 assists, um, which is a total of 138. Uh, the nearest player to him is Harry Kane, um, with 88 goals and 22 assists, so that's uh, what 28 goal, um involvement less in tour places Jamie Vardy Sterling with 95 the, the progression of this player Keith is what gets me because 
the edge of the sea stuff is is interesting from Kev. You know, when when he first came along, you were just like, "What the fuck's going on here?" Like this fella just keeps scoring goals, and then you just got used to it. You know, twenty goals, twenty five goals, twenty four, whatever it is, right? For over the season, I'm sure someone would be able to, to tell me about him his, his goal return over the last four four seasons. But now, when you look at him, Keith, it's like, you know, he has the goals, he has the pace, he has the assists. But now he's getting more and more involved in games. He's bringing more and more players into the into the game, into play. He's not just we spoke about it a while back about he's not just getting a fullback one on one and having a go with him. That he's actually being involved in Harvey Elliott being there in particular about around triangles and beating teams, actually playing through teams. And that's where I think's giving him the that's where I think the recognition's coming from now, Keith. The fact that he's not just a guy that exposes a defender. And scores goals. He's exposing teams. He's ex- he's exposing complete, you know, back lines with his mates, and they're going, Jesus, he's actually interplaying now and all. It's, it's all coming together for him. Absolutely. I, what I've loved about Mo Salah um, is I, so I've got a thing for players, uh, particularly if, if um, maybe English is not their first language, that they come out and they do press conferences. I've always been a big believer that when the players come out, they speak about, uh, on behalf of the club afterwards. They they, they come out and, and and they give their assessments. That they they, they genuinely have a, a, a deep, you know, like they see themselves as a bit of an ambassador for the club. And I've always felt that Mo Salah does not get the credit he deserves because he's because Suarez never did it. Torres never did it. Coutinho never did it. They never came out and spoke for the club and and really like wore the badge with honour. And I feel like Mo Salah wears that badge with honour. And I and I genuinely believe that he loves playing for Liverpool. And this season has seen him step up into an even more... He's taken more responsibility, probably more than ever before, because he's obviously seen what's happened last season, but he still believes in the players this season. And he, he he's, he's put it in, on himself to be like, Do you know what, actually, I've got Ronaldo coming in, I've got Lukaku coming in, I've got Messi's making the move to PSG. I want to prove to all of these guys that I am a level above these guys and I want to do it at Liverpool. And he doesn't, re- I, I just don't feel like he gets that praise. It surprised me from the likes of Jamie Carragher that a couple of seasons ago, he, they, were, they were talking about how we could potentially let Salah go if we were going to get let player go, maybe it could be Salah. It always baffled me because I was like, but this guy really plays for the shirt and now I think after that City performance by the way just off topic every time Salah scores a brilliant brilliant mesmerising goal we always draw yeah yeah the Tottenham one the Tottenham one is a crime against football and everything yeah. The Everton one as well. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't even win the Puskas Award for the Everton one, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> With Lovren falling on his face. Um, but no, going, going back to that, you know, it's everyone's for, now everyone's falling over themselves to give him the praise he should have been getting uh, a, a couple of years ago. And it's not necessarily for, for just for the goals, you know, for the assists as well. 37 assists, so he has more assists than Harry Kane, who gets all the praise in the world for being a striker that helps his team, that is a playmaker as well as being a goal scorer, but he has more assists than, than, than Kane. Sterling gets that type of praise as well for being an assist maker and and, and, and being creative and helping the team in the build-up play. He has more assists than, than, than Salah as well. And yet the British media were piling onto him, calling him greedy and selfish. And, 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 and sitting there, you know, like, oh, we just don't know why Salah doesn't get the praise. We, we just can't put our finger on it. What yeah, but could you, you not but, but, wrong? But, but but do you know what the thing the interesting thing is? Goldstein said and, and, I, and uh, don't, I I might be paraphrasing a you know. bit and he said he just doesn't do it for me. And I went, What the fuck do you want him to do for you? No. You know, he said you know Do you know what Goldstein does is Goldstein knows and talks sport to it. Every journalist in the country does it. Nothing generates clicks like a Liverpool story. Yeah. And nothing mm. generates clicks. On a Liverpool story more than a striker or a forward or conflict. Talk sport are masters at it. They'll trot out these presenters to say and do whatever it takes to get clicks and generate traffic. That's all it is. And yeah, but my issue with that, Kev, my issue with that, Kev, is that is, uh, and, uh, you're dead right, but I, I, I can't understand how people can look quiet. at themselves after doing that. You know, no, if you have an opinion, by all means have an opinion, but don't be so vague in it. Jamie, I want to talk to you about the, the contract situation because I have a little theory here. Right, and 
I know nothing about his contract situation. And I'll put it out there, I don't think anyone knows what, what their contract situation is. No one knows fuck all about it, right? In my opinion. And, you know, I, I tweeted the other day, it's amazing after that goal that every journal in the country now knows how much Mo Salah wants and what he's doing. <laughs> and he doesn't, he's, the Liverpool fans don't like him. And, you know, he's not adored enough. And he's all complete and utter horseshit, right? Um, from top to bottom. And, and wherever. International public, week as well, mate. Wherever, they need where, to write whatever, whatever publication they were, I'm not going to name them. People know who they are. Abs- how you're reading this shit is unbelievable. But what I will say is that the credit that's coming from coincides, right? With the fact that there may be, maybe, and I don't think there is, um, because I've no proof of it, there may be a contract issue, right? I think when you look at Liverpool and the lack of the lack of um I suppose adoration he gets outside of Liverpool was because oh he's Liverpool true and true and you know look at him and he's fucking brilliant and you know, don't say anything because he's he's t- he's tied to Liverpool. I think there's a bit of and I don't know if you agree with me, Jamie, but all of a sudden now, oh, he wants this amount of money, and to try actually, to try actually, nearly force something in this and and make cause a bit of a rift. Let's give him shit loads of credit now. Let's give it to him now, and his advisor would see and go, look, you're they're calling you the best player in the world, and if Liverpool don't pay, you go here. It's literally like a campaign, a, a reverse campaign. I don't know if you think I'm right, Jamie, but that's that was just my thinking on it. I think journos have been badly exposed by the fact that Mo has made them all look very foolish. I think that's the that's the key here. Liverpool Liverpool fans have never, in my opinion, not undervalued Mo. I think journalists outside of Liverpool have undervalued Mo. They, for some reason, they don't seem to want to give him the credit. I think you touched on it before. Harry Kane gets far more credit than Mo does, and just look at the numbers that he's been delivering. I think we're we're entering a realm now, though, with the contract. Uh, conversation where Liverpool do have a wage structure. I understand the conversations or the uh, the resistance in most cases to not want to break that wage structure. And if you look down East Langs Road and you look at Manchester United and they've given big contracts to players that don't deliver consistently, that's when you have a problem because the players that are then delivering consistently go into the manager's door and say, well, that guy who's been on the bench or who hasn't delivered numbers for X amount of games is getting double the money of me. Mo Salah is not that player. Mo Salah is delivering numbers that Liverpool fans haven't seen. That is all, is, is world level. Mo, Mo Salah is one, is one of the best two, three players in the world for me at the moment. He deserves every penny of the money that is being mooted. He wants supposedly, and again, pinch of salt with this, parity with the likes of Kevin De Bruyne. He absolutely deserves to be on that wage, in my opinion. The other thing that you've got to factor in is he's fit as a fiddle. If you are looking at a role model of how to live your life as a professional, I think there was a story that came out, Harvey Elliott was going to eat a piece of bread or a piece of pasta, I'm sure somebody will, will quote me. Bread. Probably Chris Brack. Bread. Chris Brack's great. With the, it was a bread, was it? Mm-hmm. Um, bread. Chris always corrects me because he, he's the stato, but he, he basically said, no, how many have you had today? That's no more. You don't do that. Le- Mo lives his life to be the best version of himself on the pitch that he can be. He deserves every penny that he should get. And I think for me, I so I have my time as a Liverpool fan and me and my son, we were watching the game against City. And this is no word of a lie. When Salah scored that goal, I remember shouting, me, me, missus, my son, we were all watching it. I said, again, filled with emotion. You know, I'm an emotional guy, Gav. I was like, that's the best thing I've ever seen on a football pitch. That's the better. I kept shouting it. And then next minute, Josh, my son, he's only nine. He just ran out into the road shouting. He literally ran out into the road oh, shouting. Yeah. So I followed him. So the two, like the the release of emotion from seeing something like that happen. And it's not, look, we're not playing Norwich here, no disrespect. We're not playing a car, you know, a, a, a meaningless cup game. This was at the highest stakes moments possible against a team that doesn't concede chances, never mind goals. And he made them look silly. Like, to be a fan and being able to watch somebody operate at this level consistently, there was two players that I always held in my time as a fan as the as the pinnacle. Stephen Gerrard is my hero for lots of reasons. He was always the best for me and and still is. Look, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna claim otherwise. I always used to say that the most talented that I saw was Luis Suarez. I don't believe that anymore. I think Mo Salah is above Luis Suarez for me. 
um, in lots of different ways. And for him to even be in that conversation now shows what an impact that he has had on on the club, the fan base um, over a short period of time. And I would be giving him every penny that he requests and secure him at the club for as long as physically possible. I don't even know if I answered your question there, Gavin. No, just went you, off on a tangent. No, you on did. You how did. Much I and and I think by by the way you've said it and and giving him every penny or whatever, I'm not, I I don't go along with giving him whatever he wants because he could just turn around and go, I want a million quid a week. And, you know, mm. what I mean, that's you yeah. can't do that. Well, parity, isn't it, with De Bruyne, the yeah. likes of the best players in the league, which he has been consistently now. Yeah, and I said this the other night on on the fat back four, and I'll say it again. We, for me, are at the stage with Mo Salah, where Barcelona were with Lionel Messi. And what I mean by that is, is that he's an exception to the rule. All right. Yeah. Now, Lionel Messi is an exception to fucking any rule because he's the best player that's ever walked the earth, in my opinion. Right. But with us, like, we've signed up Van Dyke, we've signed up Allison, Fabinho, Henderson, Trent Alexander Arnold, Robertson, wherever, there's, there's probably more. And listen, they're not turning around and saying, uh, well, if I get this, can I have, if he gets this, can I have that? I don't, I, I think, I think. Regardless of how much those players rate themselves, and they right, rightly so, they should. I don't think any of them deny this fella whatever he gets, yeah. because I think he's he's literally the fulcrum of this club for me at the moment. He's the fulcrum mm-hmm. of this club at the moment, and I think when you look at Barcelona, who look they're in the shit at the moment because they were giving Griezmann eight hundred grand a week and mad shit like your man uh, Sergio Dest is, is it Sergio Dest or um, two hundred and forty or something? Yeah, like he that, was on anyway. ten grand or something. Uh, Beyond. Of Ajax. And Beyond he, and 465. Yeah, and he rocks up a bar yeah. and he goes, just take what you want. It always reminds me of the one with um, the left fall that left Derby and went to Leeds. Oh, uh, oh Seth, Johnson. God, Seth, Seth Johnson. Johnson. Seth Johnson, Johnson walks into a uh, Seth yeah. Johnson walks into a meeting with Leeds, looking for. I think he was hoping for fifteen grand a week. Peter Rizdale sitting there with a million quid worth of fish in a fish tank <laughs> at Ellen Road, and just literally throws forty grand at him. And he's like, "What the fuck?" Did they literally had to try play a kill, walk out of the room, and pretend to discuss it, where they were trying to dying to get back to the door. But the thing with me is, is that I think we're at, and I'm not putting them on the pedestal, uh, Lionel Messi, but the situation is. These players may be all great, but this fella is just a complete exception. And and if it's, I think three hundred grand, three hundred and fifty grand is more than management for Liverpool. Like yeah. somebody says there, like if you add it up, um, it was in the it was in the thing there. Like I think it's over the course it would cost you about one hundred and four million quid to secure Mo Salah for the next four to five well, years. And I think it's I'll tell you it's, one it's money, thing. money absolutely well spent. I'll tell you one thing though, I don't believe for a second the likes of Allison, Van Dyke, Fabinho. Robertson, Trent, commit the best years of their career to Liverpool without an understanding already in place that Salah's done. Mm. You know, I don't believe for a second that they commit that long. They're be- especially Virgil. Virgil could go anywhere in the world and command whatever wage he damn wants. Mm. So I don't believe for a second that something isn't in place already. That either it's waiting to be announced or it's the finer details or is it, you know, trademarks on whatever image rights. It's trivial stuff. I don't believe for a second that these players haven't talked and discussed this yeah. amongst themselves for us. <clears throat> Are you staying? Are you signing? Who's, you know, yeah. yeah. I, I, and listen, they're normal, they're normal lads at the end of the day yeah. in a working environment. Keith, exactly. want to say something on this? But, but no, I, I, for me, I think, as I, I, I've long been of the case that, you know, football is evolving. And I, I, spe- I spoke about this a lot during the preseason when it comes to transfers. Transfer fees, I believe, is going to become less and less important as it goes on. And actually tying players down is going to be like making a new signing. And I know it used to be quite a joke. When it's, oh, it's, like, no, it's like a new signing when a player comes in from an injury or, 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 or whatever. But mm. I so stick by it 11 times now we have. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I stick by this point. Mo Salah signing an extension for Liverpool will be the biggest signing in the Premier League um, for the summer and the winter transfers will be the biggest and most important signing um, uh, in the league. Without a shadow of a doubt, it will be bigger than Ronaldo. It will be bigger than Lukaku. It will be bigger than all of them. And... You know, I, I, the, the the hope is that the lack of activity in outward uh, um, uh, transfer fees and, and spending money was so that we could tie use that 
those funds to tie down our players. And actually, when you say, for example, it would be £104 million for a contract over four or five years, then I'd rather that money got spent on Mo Salah's contract rather than buying three or four players that everybody on Twitter says is going to be the next big thing. And, yeah. you know, that, that idea of giving the players the money and the signing on bonuses and, and, and your wage structure, I think is going to eclipse transfer fees moving forward. And I think something like Salah with the extension could be the, the, the start of that. I think picking up players, you know, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Salah was to get the extension for four years, if Salah leaves <laughs> on the three. And, 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 and after, after all, of the, all this is done because of the, uh, the size of the contracts. That's the direction I think football's going into. 